All right, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Nate. Welcome to Big Nate's Book Reviews, home of the best book reviews. And today we are reviewing Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. So I got my doobie right here. It's ready to be sparked. And today we are smoking this one for Kazuo Ishiguro. So uh, needless to say, if you do have your doobie at home, go ahead and spark that. And then we are going to get right into it. Um, and then actually real quick, shout out to my boy, Michael V. He's the one who bought me this book. He bought it off my Amazon wish list. He's the one that told me to get an Amazon wish list, and then he bought me he bought me a few books. So good looking out to Michael V. He's an example of a day one. And I invite you all to do the same. I'll have a link for my Amazon uh, wish list in the description. And real quick, we are gonna hit this for Michael V. One time. So everybody at home, we smoking this for Ishiguro, but uh, for everybody at home, go ahead and hit this for Michael V. One time. Shout out my boy. But anyway, let's get into the book. So. This book was published. There we go. That's officially sparks. This book was published uh, March second, twenty twenty one. I know the date because it was published on my birthday. One second. There we go. Um, it was published on my birthday last year. Um, so it's just over a year old. Um, it was nominated for. It was long listed for the Booker. It was long listed for the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Fiction. Bunch of other stuff. New York Times bestseller. Yada yada yada. All that good shit. But uh, Ishiguro himself has actually been nominated for the Booker four times, which is actually pretty impressive when you think about it. And um, he won it. He won it with um, Remains of the Day. And if you watch my book haul, then you know that is uh, that is the book I meant to pick out, but I accidentally picked out uh, Never Let Me Go. So I will read Never Let Me Go. But anyway, Remains of the Day is his book that won um, the Booker. And um, yeah, he's at the Nobel Prize in Literature as well. And among other things, this is kind of crazy. He was appointed. Um, Knight Bachelor for his services in literature. I don't know if that's like a British thing, an England thing. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I don't even, like, is Britain part of England? Is Britain, like, the capital of England? I I'm just going to stop talking, bro. I'm just going to stop talking, but I am being 100 with you. But anyway, shout out to, um, oh, what the fuck? Bro, everything's starting off wrong right now, but. But we're going to go ahead and get into the book, so. Um, Clara and the Sun is about, uh, is about a robot or like, it's about an artificial intelligence, a robot, um, in, in what this, in this society, she's what's called an AF, which is an artificial friend. And, um, she is being sold Clara as a, as an AF in this like retail store. I think this finna work, bro. That's crazy. Um, she's being sold in a retail store with a bunch of other AFs. She gets picked up by this little girl named Josie, as well as by her mom, and she goes to sort of live with them on the countryside, and throughout the book, you get to learn more about Clara, more about Josie, more about her mom, as well as just sort of like society in general. There's hints of genetic editing, artificial intelligence is obviously a part of the equation. It's just sort of like this dystopian society that you get to learn more about throughout the book. But um, So yeah, that's roughly what the book is about. I'll also add that there are some potentially ulterior motives for why... Um, they have picked Clara up, um, but yes, I'll just go ahead and leave it there. This is one of those books where the plot is is one that you can't really talk about without spoiling, or at least certain aspects of it. But yeah, okay, so I'm gonna get into some of the stuff that I liked. Um, and there's a lot of stuff I liked about this book, to be honest, truly. But um, sorry, one sec, doobie maintenance. <laughs> Hold up, I know people don't get mad. They're gonna say, "Bro, you fucking spent way too much time not talking about the book." Um leave <laughs> doing maintenance is a natural part of the process and if you can't stick with that then i ask i i, I politely ask you to leave but um what the fuck was i saying yeah stuff i like about this book so for one um i like the fact this is told through clara's point of view um the fact that ishiguro is using an artificial intelligence as like the narrator as the point of view because i think sort of through by using Clara, Ishiguro is able to sort of point certain things out um, that we don't, that we otherwise are kind of too close to see. It's like fish and water type deal. Speaking of, by the way, have you read um, This Is I think it's called This Is Water by David Foster Wallace, DF Dub. Um, that's a good essay, like slash speech or whatever. But anyway, that's actually kind of related too. But anyway, the whole thing is there's certain things that we kind of don't, we do every day, but we kind of don't think about, we sort of take for granted. So there's this one, um, there's this one scene, cause she's trying to like learn, kind of, she's sort of like constantly adapting 
to the human world and she's trying to like be learn how humans work like human behavior she's just like kind of taking notes on how we how we move and um at one point she's like oh okay so that's crazy so it turns out that people can be act very different according to who they're with like they can drastically change their behavior just according to uh who they are around so so she she kind of points and and like we all kind of we've been there where it's like one kind of just stuff where it's like for one like you don't add a saying with your mom as you do even necessarily like with your dad as you do with your girl as you do with the boys uh, as you do with your boss there's just kind of that aspect of it where we really do put on sort like my people are that i'm with at work bro <laughs> i don't think they would suspect a thing of this i swear to god i think they think i'm just some normal ass motherfucker uh maybe a little eccentric you know um never seen him in a pair of jeans only wear jogger ass motherfucker uh but uh anyway yeah so there's just that aspect of it but there's also the stuff where it's like even within your own friend group like i can have one group of friends i can have another group of friends that doesn't mean, like, to be honest, these two friend groups probably wouldn't get along. Definitely not with the same way I get along with them. And that's because you kind of, you act one way with this group and you act one way with that group. And and Clara, that's just something that Clara notices. She's like, oh, okay, so I need to account for that. That's just part of how how they operate. Yeah, that's one uh, certain just, like, aspect of that. And then there's another one I like that, like, she's at, she's just, like, kind of watching a conversation and she's like, it's funny how people go through these crazy maneuvers, like these straight, like social gymnastic type thing to avoid a certain topic, but like in an uncomfortable one, but the uncomfortable feeling is still there because like they're not, they're like avoiding the uncomfortable topic, like that kind of thing. And that, that's like so true. We've all, been, we've all been that sort of like elephant in the right, uh, elephant in the room type thing. And yeah, so I, I don't know, just in general, this sort of device on each girl's part to use the artificial intelligence in Clara as a narrator is, yeah, I thought that was good. I thought that was cool. And if anything, I wanted to see more of it. Okay, that's one thing. Another thing I liked is the fact that in this book, um, the sun is a character. The sun, S-U-N, is a character, most definitely. So for one, there's just these really beautiful like beautifully written scenes like in terms of just the writing like the prose um these these really great scenes where because clara is solar power and there's just like this he writes it so well i'm gonna like butcher it but it's just like this nourishing fulfilling energy that he describes and it's just like so satisfying it's really the word is nourishing like like that's what it feels like and you know i'm reading this in spring so the sun's kind of coming out and shit so it's like it's hitting a little different uh, so yeah, there's, okay, so that's just off top. That's just like kind of, uh, but Clara views the sun, whether or not it's actually the case is ambiguous, I think on Ishiguro's part, but, uh, Clara at the very least seems to think that the sun plays a causal role in how the world works. Like she views it as like this godlike omnipotent figure that has control. Um, she, yeah, she basically just views it as God. And when she's talking to it, it's kind of like she's in prayer and she does things where she'll, she'll bow to the sun. Um, so, so yeah, there's all that. And that, first off, that's, I think that's just cool. Like I said, off top, cause, um, you have Clara who is like this AI robot who has this relationship with like the natural entity, like the sun, like literally the sun. Um, and then on top of that, yeah, Clara is sort of as she's going about her life and i feel like she i will say to ishigori's credit i feel like she sort of gradually gets um smarter and more aware and and that's pretty cool on his part but he she starts she starts wondering at like one point she's kind of asking the son and he she's basically like look i'm sure you got your reasons but why is it that you make uh why is it that you make innocent children like people who haven't even had time to do anything wrong, like completely blameless. Why would you make it so they go through so much suffering? Like, why would you allow that? So Ishi Girl is just sort of in this, again, relationship between like robot and son. He's kind of showing that they're developing the same like universal moral questions as like how we do. Because that, that's always what you think of when you think of God. Like when you start, like, I feel like you know, you kind of just go along with it. Like I was, I was born up Christian. You just kind of go along with it. But then at some point, and I feel like it was around like adolescence, like teenage years, um, you're just kind of like, wait, hold up. That's a little, 
it's a little suspect, bro. Because if you can control everything, why? And then because because we've all heard those really terrible stories, those a little life type stories. If you watch a little life, that's gonna hit a little extra different for you. But um, we've all heard those a little life, just really fucked up, really like not cool shit. I think Dostoevsky does some shit where like he talks about like a. There's like tortured children or like burnt people get completely disfigured by getting burnt in a bar, like in a, uh, in a fire. Like anyway, um, all, all that's to say it's, it's cool. She, um, Clara just in Clara, she's able to develop the same sort of moral questions as we do with our God. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. Um, enough. Okay. On top of that. Yeah. I'll just say this briefly. Like I thought the themes were pretty cool. Uh, the best one he does definitely by far, I think is explorations of love and maybe happiness but there's other stuff like um loneliness um what it's like to be human like what it's like to be us not only what is it separates us from robots and ai why are we really different from clara but also is there something unique about us right here and right now is there something like a soul some essence to who we is there some essential big nate that is non-transferable non-copyable something that's unique to me just right here and now yes is there anything like so, so he talks about that and um okay so okay let's let's bring it back in let's bring it back in i'm gonna give this book a c plus which is just you know it's good it's good and you know that's what i thought about the book it was good it was not great it wasn't like bad by any means but um it was just sort of average like i gave this a three stars on uh on Gribri. so okay i'm gonna get into some of the critiques i'm gonna leverage my devastating critiques now um okay so one the plot was kind of slow i felt like where not not even slow sorry take that back it's not even slow but i'm not really hooked i'm just kind of like okay this is cool um, this is good. I'm, but I'm kind of waiting for the story to really start. You know what I'm saying? Like really sink my teeth in. And at no point does that really happen. And then after a while, there's like this weird sort of, I won't say when and really what happens, but there's like this to me, it's like a Murakami like development. And, um, I say that disclaimer, I've only read Kafka on the shore and like a couple short stories, but it seems to me like part of his style is at some point, pretty you know after the book is established at some point there's some crazy or just significant development that changes the scope of the story changes the context of the story just sort of changes this into a, a new thing um so there's that okay which is cool i like that that's what morikami does best i think clark and his son kind of has something like that i feel like but pulled off a lot less well like i feel like he just sort of it's sort of just going and then he just kind of throws it in a little bit out of nowhere, a little bit out of left field. And it sort of, it seems rushed. Like it's not really developed. Like he brings this stuff up, but he doesn't really, he doesn't really follow through with it at all. He just sort of throws it in there. And on top of that, it's like unrealistic. I think for, I think like for so many reasons, it's like, you're telling me Clara who can't, who can't, uh, 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 uh. You telling me she's gonna be able to, she's gonna be able to turn around and do. Uh, 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 uh. I don't nah like it's it. That's how I felt about it to the point where it kind of took me out of the story for a little bit. And I there was even a specific line that I, which I mentioned, um, in my wrap up or something that kind of just made me like put the book down and be like, dang, I, I. It seemed like a rough draft. That's how I felt about this book. It seemed like a rough draft everything including like the theme so i talked about the themes earlier i feel like he doesn't really flesh those out either so there's that like sort of just one thing which i'm kind of willing to overlook but then in general the book in general i feel like it brings a lot of these things up but it doesn't really explore them with i think the exception of um love i think I think, uh, I almost said Murakami fucking Ishiguro does love really well. And there's a couple examples that I like, which I like, if you read the book, um, Josie's mother, her relationship with Josie, certain aspects of it and her relationship with another character who's like briefly mentioned. But, um, if you read the book, I think, you know who I'm talking about where they're kind of like, it's express, it's, it's love. Like it's, it's, but it's like weird and kind of fucked up and just kind of morbid. Like just very strange at times but but it's but it's dope so i like that and then i also like um josie and rick her neighbor rick i think they have a cool progression and i think the ending is especially interesting like that's these are like new way like these are conceptions expressions of love that um, i think are unique and creative and i and i like that and i want to see more of it but anyway so i like that one but other than that i think the point is it was just kind of surface level he just kind of brings it up and doesn't really follow through like i just read 
Crime and Punishment by uh, Dostoevsky. And that is an example of, I think, honestly, I'm starting to think that this is what separates like really great literature from like just good literature is crime and punishment is it has like a set of themes and it just goes it goes hard on them it just like explores them to the furthest depths to like the furthest reaches just freaking almost ad nauseum bro. like almost to a point like almost to a fault but um yeah so there's that book which is and then and then it compared to clara and the sun which sort of brings them up but just kind of hand waves sort of gestures um at least for a lot of it but like i said there are some good ones but okay 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 i think i'm just gonna leave it there oh after one more thing actually because okay so like i'm saying that's like another thing that's like kind of surface level and then the thing is with clara the the person who is telling this story clara is artificial intelligence and what that buys ishiguro is all the stuff like i said where she's uh she's able to point out certain things that we don't normally uh notice but it comes at the cost of Clara being kind of a detached narrator. And I think that's stylistic, that, uh, like the charitable interpretation is that was stylistic on Ishiguro. The non-charitable is that it was just kind of bad writing. But at no point do I really get to know, I feel like, what Clara is thinking and what Clara is feeling. Like, I never know what she's even, how she's feeling about this whole situation. There's a lot of things happening, like. She almost just sort of reacts, which again, which is why it might be, which is why it might be uh, stylistic on Ishiguro's part. But it makes for an overall sort of like arms at uh, hand length, uh, arms at hand length um, distance from the narrator. You just kind of, I don't really connect with her as much as I'd like to. And it's third person, what is this? Third person limited. So like you get to look inside Clara's head, but none of the other characters. So all that just makes for like, I can't really click with anybody here. You feel me there? It's at a distance, but okay. I'm fucking, I'm calling it. I'm ending it here. I feel like I've talked way too long, but uh, anyway, thank you for another watching another wildly successful big Nate book review. Home of the best book reviews. Shout out to my boy, Michael V for Clara and his son, as well as kindred, which I'm currently, which I'm currently reading right now. And I'm really fucking with that. But um, if you want to follow in Michael V's leading pioneering footsteps, then I invite you to check out the fucking description, link in the description. And if you just want to support your boy, if you want to put a five on that, if you want to give me a coffee, if you just, if you fuck with what I'm doing and, and what I'm doing is something you enjoy, then, you know, support the show, whatever. But I am also glad that you're just even viewing. So that alone is enough. And um, thank you for watching Big Nate's Book Reviews, home of the best book reviews.